Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and on today's episode, I'm a very lucky boy, and I'm going to be covering some amazing cognacs from Hermitage Cognacs. Now, you may remember a couple of weeks ago, I covered a full size bottle of theirs, it was the 2005, and uh, Alex, my good friend, was kind enough to send me over five samples of some exceptionally well aged cognacs. Now, I should say at the start of the show, I'm not a, not a, a, a huge cognac guy, I'm really trying to get into it but um, I'm not excessively knowledgeable about cognac at all. So I'm probably gonna do these very exceptional cognacs a, a bit of a disservice as I go through these, but I'm gonna to try to give you guys a, a bit of tasting notes as I go through them, uh, tell you about each one in turn in a kind of very basic level. Um, although I have to say Hermitage are really good and they've got uh, excellent data sheets on these on their website. So if you are interested in finding out more about these, please do go and check them out hermitagecognacs.com, I think the, the in the description below, uh, and you can pick them up on Brandy Classics, same brand. Uh, in any case, this is gonna be a, a longer form video than my normal reviews. I'll probably leave in a few mistakes, I won't make them as snappy. I don't know how long this video is gonna be yet, but it's probably gonna be uh, you know, a, a, good, a good while longer than my normal videos anyway. So yeah, if you're into your cognacs, strap in and uh, we'll get into these. You may notice as well, I'm not gonna cleanse in between each one of these. Uh, I typically would, um, and I certainly did when I was doing my notes on these things, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to power through, uh, and it actually helps to tell the differences between two liquids when you don't cleanse in between, because they kind of cancel each other out if they're the same tasting notes, and you can pick out the differences a bit easier. A bit of a pro tip for you there if you're ever trying to see that kind of thing. But let's not waste any more time talking about that sort of stuff and we'll get into the first one. In fact, I'll go through uh, what, what matches all of these uh, and what the differences are before we get into the first one. But I've poured these out in a bit in advance because we've got some very highly aged cognacs here. So I wanted them to breathe a little bit like I would any well-aged whiskey. Now, the first thing to note is that although these are all Hermitage con uh, cognacs, they source their cognacs from all different kinds of really small... Uh, places in, in the Cognac region. These are all Grand Champagne, uh, and that is an area just to the south of the Cognac town. Now, most of these are entirely Uni Blanc grapes, but apart from the first two, which have got a little bit of Folie Blanche, uh, I'm going to be absolutely massacring the French language a little bit there, but please do apologise. I apologise for that. There's a mistake that I'm going to leave in. They're all different houses, apart from the first two, which are Chez Richon. Then we've got a Segon Sac, we've got a Rio and a Ville Ancienne. Uh, again, absolutely massacre in the French there. Uh, I am, I've got a little kind of cheat sheet here in front of me, so you will see me refer down to these. There's a lot of information that I have no chance of retaining on my own. So yeah, let's get into the first one and see what we've got. So the first one is a, uh, a vintage. As you can see, we've got vintages and age statements. This is the 1995, uh, 43%. Uh, the big thing to note about vintages versus age statements is that uh, when the uh, the makers, the growers of the grapes, let's say, have a particularly good year, they will uh, gather all those uh, all that produce within that year together, and they'll have it um, secured away by the official governing body of such things, uh, and they'll make their cognac out of it, and that'll be kind of sealed off. And it can only be tampered with if it's under direct supervision from the governing bodies. Uh, and that's what makes that a vintage. The, the age statements um, might have just one vintage in them, but they might not also. They might have different growing seasons in there as well. That's the main difference. There's obviously some nuances there as well. I'm not going to get into too much of that sort of stuff here today because, as I said earlier, no expert on the subject. Just what I know from hearsay. So, yeah, so this is the 1995. But... It has spent 24 years in a cask. Uh, this has had um, a practice of wood chippings added to it as well. So uh, that, that it spent probably four years with a bit of wood chips in it. It also spent six to eight months in brand new casks before being transferred into older casks. A very common practice in the cognac world. Um, so yeah, I mean, you get this kind of like deep, deep, deep coppery color when you do stuff like that. And as you can see, these are mostly the same sort of colors uh, the the last one which we'll get into a bit later is a really thick deep treacly color nice let's go to the nose then and see what we've got from this first one now if you did watch my my other video the 2005 that's also a shay 
So we're going to be expecting similar sort of vibes of it. Obviously, that one's a lot younger than the one I tried before. Than this one is. But on the nose, I'm getting these kind of coffee elements, which is really nice. These nutty elements. Quite a good deal of oak in there as well. And uh, I'm probably not going to mention it much, but you do get a kind of a very sweet grapey note off a lot of cognacs. I do anyway. But I'm probably not going to go into that much as we go through because it's pretty much a constant. Let's try it on the palette then. Mm -hmm. Super sweet, but not in a sickly way. Strangely, that coffee kind of disappears off a little bit, but the nuts stay around. And I get kind of apple -y and a bit of orangey notes in there as well. Really tasty, really tasty. Um, I have to say, the 2005 was exceptional and I'm still enjoying my bottle of that. Um, but that takes a bit of a step up. I'm, I'm going to talk about a bit of price as well. That one there is £114 in the UK. Uh, and that's the cheapest one. They, they're going up in age and in price. So uh, obviously we're talking about very expensive stuff here. Um, I'm not going to talk about value on this video because uh, I don't really know. I have to say uh, I'm not a huge cognac guy again. I'm not going to talk about that too much more, I promise. Um, but... I can't really say how that fits in in the market. Um, it's just it's just a lot of money, but yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is a thirty year old, thirty years in a cask. Again, Chez Richon, uh, and again has six to eight months in new casks. Plus, it's had uh, kind of wood chips added and things like that. So yeah, pretty normal stuff. Again, a good rich color on there. This one is a £159, so it's, uh, considering the last one was 24 years, for an extra six years, it's you know it's a good good sort of 40, 50 quid extra. Let's try on the palette, uh, on the nose then. Another mistake for you. Now again, it's a coffee note, but this is a, a much richer coffee note on the side of kind of mockery element. Loads more nuts to it as well. Not as sweet as the other one. A little bit more kind of treacle-like on the nose. Let's try on the palette. Mm. Now again, far less sweeter than the last one. Most of those apples and oranges have disappeared a little bit for me. Been replaced by the coffee notes that I weren't getting on the first one. Wasn't getting on the first one. And uh, I'm now getting on this, translating from the nose to the palette. Mm. A really kind of thick, viscousy mouthfeel to it as well. Mm. Really luxurious stuff. As you can see, I've poured myself wee samples of this and I've left some in the sample uh, bottles as well because I want to enjoy these again later when I get the chance. Okay, kind of powering through them a little bit, but um, I think that's probably okay. Uh, again, not doing them justice at all, um, but uh, I just want to bring these to you because they're just, what a chance to try stuff like this. Uh, next, we have a 40 year old. Now, this one, we go to a different house, a different uh, a different winemaker, a different distillery. Uh, and this one is the Segon Sac, which is um, again, just south of Cognac uh, in the Grand Champagne region, of course. Now, nothing um, odd or special about the way that they've made this. This is just straight up casks, 40 years, job done. £264 this sells for right now. Uh, again, I, I shouldn't talk about colour too much because we've, we've talked about it a lot, but it's just such a, a beautiful kind of almost red coppery vibe to that. I'll bring that right up. There you go. Look at that. Mm. Okay, on the notes for this one then. Now, for this one here, getting far less of those uh, coffee notes on this. For me, this is a way more fruity note. It's a little sweeter. It's a lot of vanillas. It's a lot of pears. Let's try on the palette. Mm. Oh, that is superb. Again, more vanillas, more pears. A touch of oranginess going on there. 
Strangely enough, uh, although the nose is, uh, it smells a little sweeter, it isn't as sweet on the on the palate. A little drying on the back end. Quite oaky, actually. A lot of tannins going on there. Mm. Really a good spiciness, pepperiness on the back end as well. Really enjoying that. Oh, let that one sit for a minute. Mm. Really nice. Okay, penultimate then. We've got the 50-year-old. I mean, obviously, we never see stuff like that in the, in the whiskey world. It exists, of course, but for a 50-year-old whiskey, the price is just... I mean, it's not cheap. This is, what's this, £479. So, not cheap at all. There you go. Uh, this one, again, a different maker. This is the Rio. Uh, the... Hermitage, again, they, they source from all these tiny, small places, so they call it Hermitage Rio, but really they're kind of an independent um, producer who sell to Hermitage. Really good, really good setup because they get to, they don't have to worry too much about where they're selling to. They can just sell to these guys who will sell it for them. Perfect. So now we're starting to get really deep on the old colour. Mm. Let's try on this one then. Oh, I should say again, this one, Again, nothing too fancy on the on the casking. It's just 50 straight years. Now, the problem with this sort of thing is that um, obviously uh, 50 years is a really, really long time. Um, so it's, the details are a bit, a bit wishy-washy, I should say. So, you know, we don't have as much information about how it was made uh, unless the records were good. So yeah, we're not sure about the, how this was distilled too much, but yeah, 50 years, Long time in a cask. On the nose then. <sighs> okay. This one again, a lot of fruitiness going on here. It's almost like a tropical nature to it. Still with a little touch of that coffee mockeriness coming on through there. Almost like a dark chocolatey vibe. Let's try on the palette. Mmm. Mm, really got to almost chew on that. Mm, it's it, very tannic, very tannic. It's but it's a kind of more leathery notes than it is oaky. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, it's so thick. You could, I mean, you could literally just chew through that. Oh, superb. I mean. But the price though, £479 is, is so much money. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that it's probably worth it. Judging by uh, the price of the 2005 that I tried the full bottle of. Um, I mean, it's a lot of money for me. I, I could never afford it, I have to say. But if uh, if you're into your cognacs and uh, and you've got that sort of money, I genuinely don't think you'd be disappointed by that. That's um, really exceptional. Uh, now, ABV-wise, I should have said as well, we're going up and up and up. So we've got 43 on the first two, 44, 44. And now we've got a 47%. So we've gone right up. Uh, and that 47 is um, quite rare to see. I'm have to. I, I I'm not entirely sure. Again, I'm, I don't know every cognac in the world. But uh, the most cognacs I see are in the low 40s. Mostly 40%, but definitely in the low 40s. To see them, 47 is a bit odd. Now you can see I've, I've probably enjoyed this one a bit too much. So that won't last long, I don't think. Uh, this one is the um, the Ville, I'm going to say Ancien, I'm probably wrong on that, so apologies for that. Um, again, uh, this one is a complete 50 years uh, plus, this is 1960, I didn't show you the bottle, did I? No, this is the 1960 vintage, so not, a, not a, an age statement, but it has spent 50 years in the cask. Now this one here does something a bit different, it's... Again, a bit more coffee, but it's loads more. It's like licorice on top of it now. And there's so many tannins going on here. It's like it's super oaky, super leathery. Bit of kind of tobacco elements coming on there as well. And this one as well, I should say, is like five hundred and sort of seventy pounds, which is again really expensive. But I guess when you think about what you're getting here, um, something that was made in 1960, which is crazy. Mm, okay, let me uh, 
try on the old palette. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, now the only thing about this is, again, I could never do this justice, but more of those coffee elements, more of those licorice elements coming through. Almost, it's almost like a bit minty, a bit aniseedy. It's so thick, it's so, so thick. It's like thicker than any whiskey I've ever tried. Mm. It's almost like a dessert. Lots of kind of chocolatey elements going on there as well. Mm. Now, um, again, I've said it a couple of times in the video now, not an expert in cognacs in any way, shape or form. There are definitely people out there that know the cognacs better than me. Um, someone you should check out is uh, Chris at the last drop. He recovers a lot of cognacs. And um, if you're into cognacs, you should definitely go and have a look at his channel. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed this relatively brief, although longer than my usual videos, uh, overview of these cognacs. I'm a very lucky boy to have tried stuff like this. Uh, and if you are into cognacs in any way, shape or form, I definitely think you should go check out Hermitage because they do uh, cognacs from kind of all all widths and lengths and whatever you want to call it uh, of, the, of the of the price spectrum so you've got some that are relatively cheap uh, although again uh, you know probably about 50 quid upwards right up to the thousands if, you, if you're really into that now um, here obviously i've tried up to about sort of five six hundred pounds uh, and as low as um 100 and odd quid and and there's some excellent stuff here i mean really really great cognacs um, based on some of the stuff I've been drinking in the past, which isn't a whole lot of cognacs. So yeah, again, if you're interested in this sort of thing, make sure you go and check out Hermitage because they're doing really wonderful stuff. Uh, and let me know if you've tried any of this stuff. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you think about the prices are okay and where they fit in in the cognac world.